personal microphones and mobile audio augmented reality systems. And the speaker, speaker is Florian Heller. Um, can you introduce your co-authors so that, uh, yeah. yeah. sure. So, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, as said, my name is Florian Heller. I'm from RWTH Aachen University in Germany. And uh, I've done this work together with uh, Jan Borchers. And I would like to present you a system called Audioscope which lets you use uh, your smartphone like a directional microphone in audio augmented reality systems. Now, uh, let's start with uh, the building blocks of audio augmented reality. So basically, spatial audio rendering applies special filters to record the audio signals uh, to give the user the impression that a uh, sound emanates from a source located um, around, uh, well, around her. And um, audio augmented reality applications use this technology to overlay the physical space uh, with virtual audio sources that the user then experiences through headphones. And um, yeah, so audio augmented reality also uh, uses the spatial rendering to create the impression that the virtual sound source uh, stays as a physical, uh, at a physical location in the real world uh, independently of the user's movement and orientation. So what kind of information do we need to create such an experience? Well, basically we, we need location and orientation. And there are tools like this uh, intelligent headset, uh, which is specially designed for this purpose. Uh, it comes with a compass and a GPS, uh, but it's pretty expensive. And if you're in a situation like a museum, you need to buy lots of these. You need to maintain them, meaning you need to charge them. They need to be paired to a smartphone. Uh, so it's quite complicated and expensive. Uh, and on the other hand, well, we all carry a device with us that already provides us this information, which is the smartphone. Uh, and we want to know if we can achieve a similar result uh, for mobile audio augmented reality applications um, using the smartphone, which then would reduce the deployment of such a system to a simple app download. Now, at last year's CHI, we presented a paper where we analyzed uh, the relative orientation of head and device. And basically, we found that they stay aligned uh, most of the time when users were navigating through a virtual audio space. Uh, but we didn't give them uh, an incentive or a clear metaphor uh, to move the device. Uh, so they didn't take advantage of that. And that's what we uh, yeah, wanted to solve this year. Uh, we provided them with a clear metaphor, which is uh, basically use your smartphone as a virtual directional microphone, meaning that the source is located to the side um, on which the audio is louder. Um, and to do a precise localization of a sound source, you basically do a zero crossing. And when the, uh, the, the level on both ears is equal, then you're the device is just in front of the sound source. Now, that also means that if you move your device to the right, uh, the sounds will move to the left in the stereo spectrum, which might be a little confusing at first. Um, so we conducted an experiment to find out if there is a performance difference in navigating towards virtual sound sources, either using head orientation or device orientation. So we set up 24 virtual sound sources in a circle of a five meter diameter. Uh, the sources are spaced by 15 degrees. And uh, the participants had to start every trial facing source number one, being at the center of the circle. Um, then a source started playing, and they had to find the correct source and name it. And to account for a more realistic setting like in a museum, where you're not allowed to go directly to the exhibits which might be represented by a virtual sound source, uh, we restricted the movement to the inner circle of three meter diameter. Since in this work we only focused on the orientation, uh, we used a Ubisense real-time location tracking system uh, in both conditions uh, with an accuracy of about five centimeters and an update rate of 34 hertz. And we measured the orientation either with the Jabra intelligent headset that, you, that you've seen before or uh, the IMU of an iPhone 5S. So both report heading with a very similar characteristic and an update rate of about 40 hertz. So if we look at the results, um, the task completion time, we can see that um, yeah, participants were 
significantly slower in the device condition than in the head condition, um, although the, this difference is only like 1.5 seconds, which, well, might not be that problematic in practice. Um, but we also asked the participants if they had prior experience with audio augmented reality. And if we split the, re the results accordingly, um, then we can see that the novices are actually um, much slower with a device than with a head, um, so significantly slower, but the experts are actually uh, faster with a device than with a head, uh, if only by one second, and it's not significant, but uh, it seems that actually this metaphor is quite easy to learn and uh, very easy to use if you're used to it. Now, since we also um, had the participants name the source that they thought were, was actually playing, uh, well, we checked if that was actually correct, and we got um, some disappointing results with an accuracy of 65 to 69 percent. However, uh, these, the, this 15 degree spacing is the lower limit of what you can differentiate with spatial audio rendering, um, meaning that, well, even with high-tech rendering, you probably wouldn't be uh, able to differentiate between two sources that, that are this close. So uh, we basically took uh, or counted off by one errors as correct, um, representing a larger spacing between the two sources. And uh, yeah, if we count off by one errors as correct, we achieve um, yeah, high results of 97 to 98% accuracy, which is totally acceptable. Um, we also had the participants uh, um, fill out a questionnaire to find out if, um, yeah, how well they are present uh, or immersed in the virtual environment. And uh, both conditions received uh, similar high ratings. So only the question, how natural did your interaction with the, the uh, environment seem, was significantly different. And otherwise, it's uh, all between four and five uh, on the five points, uh, like Likert scale. Um, so, to sum up, uh, smartphones can provide orientation data for mobile audio augmented uh, reality systems, making the de deployment much easier, um, and the realism is close. And, well, with that, I would like to conclude my talk, and I'm happy to take any questions and uh, uh, job opportunities as well. <laughs> Matt Jones from Future Interaction Technology Lab. Thank you very much for your work. Really, really nice and focused and really very well presented. And uh, if I had a job, yes, I would hire you. <laughs> and I think everyone else should think about that too. Um, so you talk about uh, the settings, you talk about museums. So when you've got a phone, of course, you've got GPS. But have you thought about how it's going to work uh, indoors? Um, yes, we thought about that. So basically, um, yes, you can, could use the same tracking system as we have. Uh, which is rather precise, but adds additional hardware to, um, to the device itself. Um, but if you look at, for example, Bluetooth beacon tracking, um, there are lots of ongoing developments from industry, research, um, etc. So we are confident that there will be a rather precise solution in the near future. Great, thank you very much.